Hi everyone, this is Charlie Veach. Um, I guess I've been meaning to make this film for a long time and it's mostly an apology to everyone and uh, an attempt to try and understand and forgive myself for the stupid things I've done and the people I've hurt and the, the way that I've um, dealt badly with hatred and um, criticism and so forth. Um, as many of you know, two and a half years ago I, I started the project called The Love Police and it, it got very popular very quickly and uh, the criticism many people had of me was don't let it get to your ego, don't let your ego get in the way and uh, I did precisely that, I let the ego get in the way and I started to think that I was better than other people or a leader or important or so forth when the actual truth, the actual truth is that I'm just a normal guy and you guys, uh, the viewers, are, is, is who I do this for. It's, um, it's, a, it's a work of trying to, I guess, make amends for many things such as being an asshole in the past, for working in the corporate world as a, as a greedy salesman in the finance world for, for many years. Um, I've just spent 50 hours in solitary confinement in a police station in London and what happened on Saturday I was at a stop the war demonstration with a few friends and for dramatic purposes just to look the part and to protect our identities we were wearing balaclavas we had our faces covered and uh, a police inspector which is a high-ranking uh, policeman and a bunch of others they came up to us and uh, the first thing they did was grab my arm which they've done many times before and uh, I think I just snapped and rather than just become docile and allow them to search me for weapons which is what they wanted to do I started saying that you guys don't have any right to just single me out and grab me like please let go of me and I, I kind of threw their arms off and um, because I'm six foot five and in their police report they said he's a big strong guy and he was acting aggressively they kind of um, they all grabbed me about five of them and um, put handcuffs on me and that's when I started screaming and getting angry and complaining about the, the handcuffs being really sore. But the thing which I'm most ashamed of was that the inspector, um, we'll call him Inspector A uh, to keep him anonymous, he, I tried to make him feel small and I started insulting him and I, I, I was looking into his eyes and really trying to make him feel uncomfortable. And just to show you that the laws of karma sometimes are quite instant. He had me put away and I went to the police station and I thought it was going to be a five-hour ordeal. But um, no, he, he streamlined the process. I didn't even get interviewed. And because it was a Saturday afternoon, the one way they could hurt me was by uh, denying bail. And the reason they used was that they thought I was going to commit further offenses at another protest on Sunday. So from Saturday afternoon until Monday evening, I was in jail. And when you're in a cell three meters by three meters for 50 hours by yourself you have a lot of time to reflect and think about your life and, and then you, you um, usually find out that most of your problems are, are self-caused and on the outside is the same as what's on the inside and what's above is so below and um, yeah coming back to the ego thing I, I became very popular and very loved by the viewers for the work there and then I went to America for the BBC thing um, and I just need to clarify I wasn't paid a penny for it I didn't sell out I didn't do anything like that but I guess my ego said yeah wow I'm important enough they're picking me to go to America I'll go and joust with them I'll go and argue with the CIA agents or FBI and I was so arrogant that I thought that wow I've got a new um, a new view about this uh, I'm still anti-state I'm still an anarchist but I didn't think um, I didn't think it was an inside job and I did a video from Times Square thinking that wow all these people that they love me they're gonna follow me um, out of the this uh, this thinking into this new thinking and um, I was wrong and overnight the the love turned into hatred and aggression and death threats and so forth and, and I dealt with it very badly I, I kind of put myself up against the wall and I started lashing out and I did videos that I'm not proud of and I'm not proud of many things I've done and I usually leave them up online. Um, I did a video, I don't know, saying fuck you and I took that one down, but a video I'm ashamed of is the video called uh, Conspiracy Theories, Conspiracy Theorists are the Enemies of the Resistance. And, and I realize now how wrong I am, how stupid that statement is. The, the very people who supported me and cared for me and took, you know, looked after me and watched my films, there I am calling them all enemies just because I, I was unable to cope with um, 
with the aggression and the sudden hatred and logging on every morning to the computer and uh, instantly feeling drained of energy and sad that people hated me so much. And uh, rather than dealing with it like a, an adult, I dealt with it like a child and I started trying to fight back or blocking people or making videos saying that certain people are the, the enemies of the resistance, which is ridiculous. Um, I, I just want to clarify, like, of course I don't agree with government and I don't think the 9-11 Commission report is right. I, I hate the idea of organized institutions as much as anyone else. I hate the fact that taxation is um, mandatory. And I hate the fact that things like Guantanamo Bay exist, that we keep bombing countries, that our government is silent when uh, regimes like the Bahrainis or the Yemenis or whoever that are allies um, keep quiet when uh, their governments start murdering civilians. And uh, just, just one example, when in Indonesia killed 200,000 people in East Timor um, about 20 years ago. That's one in three of the population. The American and British in, uh, governments and newspapers kept their mouths shut because the President Suharto was a, an ally of the West. And we, we kept our mouths shut as genocide happened. We didn't do anything. And um, the same goes for the former Yugoslavia with the tens of thousands of civilians killed in genocide before we actually did anything. But on a, on a more personal note, coming back to the, to the arrest, I, it was a kind of copy of what happened on the 26th of March. I was wearing a balaclava on Whitehall, which is where the, the government is, uh, Downing Street. And um, rather than just, you know, turn the other cheek and let them search me for weapons, of course there's no weapons, but I decided to fight back and it's stupid. I mean, one guy against 15 big policemen isn't going to go very far and uh, when you when you try and lash out at people for whatever reason they will it will become a, a vengeful match and you can't you can't beat an entire state that uh, considers you a troublemaker or an enemy um, on the physical realm all you can do is try and speak out against it and do your best but um, in the since I started the Love Police, some strange things have happened to me in terms of my health. I almost straight away, I developed serious back and joint problems when I started the Love Police, which I think is a, a response to the stress of getting arrested and the, the fear of going out there and challenging authority. And for a whole year, the, the doctors told me that it was self-inflicted, that I had arthritis in the spine and that it was from too much mountain biking. And it turns out, now that I've gone and had a few more tests, because I'm getting worse, that it's, uh, 